What up, what up, party people? Well, we're finishing up the, uh, the old propane tank here. Let's jump up under here. So, what I did was uh, push this guy over with another piece of strut. As you can see here, instead of using spacers, we got another piece of strut in there, shallow strut they call that, it's uh, in the field. It'd be seven eighths of an inch thick. So that shifted this almost. I can kind of get my pinky in here, but I'm gonna get another one hole, one hole um, L bracket where it's just one and one, 90 instead of two and two. And we're gonna put a one on this side to uh, kind of attach it in between the uh, frame there. And that should hold her. I mean, she's pretty solid. She's kind of pushed up against this outer underbody here. And, you know, this could be welded, what have you, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I've been in lots of accidents in my life. But uh, one tail was uh, the hitch on the back of a truck if it was welded. Um would have been dead uh but it was bolted so you know i like this if you know nobody wants to ride around with propane and that's why a lot of people do these things without propane and i get that and i could do so very easy enough but i just cannot stand to cook with uh electric it's got to be gas <laughs> so that's really all i'm using it for guys and I wanted to share these little guys. I, you know, no affiliation here by no means. These, these were just picked up at the big blue box store. But uh, I'm going to self-tap these. These are probably not quite quarter of an inch thick. Um, but you can see there's uh, these are two and three quarters. But you got to allow room for that drill bit on the end. So these are like a self-tapper, kind of like a sheet metal self-tapper. Silver bullets, we call them in the trade. Another trade name for the little baby guys that we shoot the metal studs together with. But these will actually drill right into an I-beam. I've done it. These things are incredible. Um, we do use a little different style in the trade. Um, I don't know if these would be that strong. But basic same idea. It's a real thin thread. So that'll go into that I-beam. <clears throat> and we did some welding yesterday. Um, just built a little iron frame L-channel. I wanted to kind of do some of that live, but man, it's so, so hard to weld when you don't weld every day, for one. And I've just got this, you know, 100-year-old welder that's a piece of crap anyway, but it's some arc welding. I know I can get some metal to metal attachment so I just kind of bubble gum it on there if you want to do good beads you need a DC welder for one AC and DC and this is just an old school AC it's throw splatter everywhere <clears throat> but we got you know the the channel all the way around it you can see down in the side it's framed all the way around so I'm gonna bolt that cage to the floor right through here is why I left that little lip and that's on the back side as well and then I'm probably going to bring something this will resemble it I don't know if I'll use wood or not but uh, this will go over top of it kind of a top cage and pull this down to the floor that'll go through the underbody also and attach and uh, keep them all in place that's about the safest thing I could come up with and you know a head-on collision or something god forbid um but it's also going to have some wood framing here in the front so we're going to fur out a wall here well technically it'll be steps uh but you know the supports will be close too instead of being all the way up like a wall so it'll be pretty stout and this will go across here guys up to the platform so this is uh 
all in the making and we're going to have cabinet come out this way to the uh, side door. We also have a sink. Oven will be here. Well, yeah, over top of the batteries. Uh, about half and half. But these guys are going to get insulated real well because they need to stay warm. Um, and heat rises, right? So we're going to play that be by ear. We may have to put uh, a little bit of height on it if we have to. But that should all work out. It's, it's close enough. I've done some measurements. And I think it's going to be fine. So um, I guess that's kind of a layout over there in the... Uh, little open area for the water heater I'm thinking that's where the electrical panel is gonna go been playing around with some ideas of course I got lots of room under the bed back there but this will be the 120 volt electrical meter so if you know if a breaker trips or something I'd want to get to it without having to get up underneath the bed you know park and crawl up underneath in the back or whatever so I think that's going to be a good little cubby hole for that. I'm going to build a wall, frame that in, and uh, we'll sneak that uh, electrical panel right there. Basically, this will be steps, guys. For those of you who can't visualize, this is going to be a step. We're not putting any weight on this, so don't need any comments on that. This will be freestanding steps attached to the main board here where we got doubled up two by fours to get on top of the bed area so it'd be easier i mean we got high top this isn't a low top van that's our solar up there working that little uh red flashing light there that means she's uh charging off the solar up top so yeah see we had the old welding helmet out yesterday so all coming together here we're just weather pending as usual changes on a flip of a switch around here they're actually calling for high lake wind advisories until eight o'clock tonight so i think we're right now in the calmness of the storm so i just want to come out and show you guys our little battery cage we worked on and uh I want to point out those screws if you really need to screw into something and you're unsure it's going to grip into metal. Those fine thread ones, they're a little hard to find. But uh, those work great, especially like attaching wood to metal or uh, steel to metal, which, you know, here I've got... I, that's why I didn't have ones long enough. You have to, you kind of have to add, uh, add a half inch, excuse me for that uh drill bit so these are two and three quarter they were a little long but they were right there where one situation was going to be a little long with the other one would still work type of thing so just bought a big box to take care of both of them but you got a lot you know penetrating through the floor down there but it's it's the underbody so Later, we're going to do that when we get some warmer weather, hopefully this summertime. I want to put the uh, uh, bed liner stuff all up underneath the, up under the van. Because she's been through hell being over there on the west coast, or east coast rather. So we've got, you know, like I mentioned in the last video, they had like a state inspection. So if they had any rust or something that could cut you. They had to fix it or tape it. So that'll be a surprise when we pull that piece of tape off. Might get into a little bit more welding on that. Um, body work I'm no pro at, but I can wing it. Grew up in uh, a family of auto body type business. Uh, periodically pretty close with a cousin of mine and his, his old man. Did it, so that's what he grew up in and did. So uh, I can fake it, no uh, no promises on a uh, show car or anything for sure, but I'm just going to put that uh, bed liner stuff on there, so it won't need to be perfect. So, yeah, probably, probably this first body line here or something down, and then I'll 
I'll have to do some paint or something here unless I come up to the window body line. So I kind of like that idea actually. And then we could just buff out all this stuff on the top because the top usually isn't as beat up anyway, right? <clears throat> so that might, we may have just walk through the plan here in another six months what we'll do. But we got lots to do in here and uh, we will catch you on the next one. Just here to share this journey with you. Stay safe out there. Till next time.